Let's take one. Hard to believe that uh, 13 months ago, the eyes of the world were watching you guys here. Uh, what's your thoughts coming back into this park, remembering London just a year ago? Uh, it's quite emotional coming back here, really. It's. Uh, I've had some great memories here. You're competing here last year it was incredible. Um, it's more than I ever thought it would be to compete in front of thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people and to get a bronze medal in the home Olympic Games. So it's nice to be back, but it's also strange because one half of me would be quite happy to say that, that was the Olympics, that was the 10th of August 2012, and let's leave that behind now. But to be, the other half of me wants to come back and experience it again and enjoy it again. So um, I'm kind of torn at the moment. Started the season off, uh, how emotional you were with that victory. I remember the concern of injuries, not sure if you're going to last, and you came to with that win. Uh, take yourself back to the first win of 2013 because it wasn't a, a very important one. We thought maybe there wouldn't even be a season. Yeah, well, Yokohama was very emotional for me because I went into it being told maybe six weeks before that I might not race at all this year. Um, and then to go to it without knowing anything, I didn't know how I was going to race, how everyone else was going to race, and then to win. It was great, really. Uh, we get to uh, to Hamburg, and suddenly we have this incredible sprint finish. Your brother said, you know what, Johnny's on fire, he's got the sprint. Uh, take me to what's going on in your mind with about 400 meters to go in that Hamburg race. Well, in Hamburg, I knew that I was in good shape going into it, and I was annoyed as well, because two weeks before, I couldn't race in Kitzbühel, and that was a race that I'd put a lot of effort into. I'd wanted, really wanted to race well there. I'd been training really hard on the bike beforehand, so I turned up at Hamburg, really wanted to win, and I knew it was a sprint race, so it, it was good for me. And then down that last 200 meters, um, I, I felt I was to come past me, and I thought, you're not gonna beat me. No way you're gonna beat me. I know I've got an extra gear. And then I came back past him, and I was, just, I was pleased to beat him. I don't often beat Alistair, so it was very special. Stockholm, uh, almost a magic trick. Uh, your brother pulls a sprint pull away on lap eight. Did you have any anticipation that that was going to happen? Because that really was the deciding factor in that race. Yeah, Stockholm was a great course. It's a, it's a great course to race on. It's a tough, tough race. And uh, yeah, I, I, I also knew, well, kind of told me before that he was going to do something like that. But the way the race was going, I didn't think he would do. It was going well. We had a breakaway and um, we were gaining time on the group behind. But that's just Alistair for you. He races that way. He, he prepared to take risks like that and uh, it, it worked for him. But it was a great race that, um, and then to come third, I was quite pleased with that, but I was a bit disappointed as well, because uh, I was quite easily beaten into third. You know, in the last lap, Javier destroyed me, really. Three men this weekend, all capable of being the world champion. Yourself, one of those guys, obviously you won it last year. It'd be great to have that opportunity to repeat. Your brother loved to be the world champion. Gomez has to have been a magic to have a win, and then some, hmm. some differences. Uh, talk about feelings coming in this weekend. Uh, this weekend is uh, what you want as an athlete, really. I didn't want to go into it uh, a bit like last year where there was a, a few mathematical scenarios which could have happened, whereas this is just simple. If you win, you're going to be world champion, and that's what you really want. That's what you want out of a series. That's what you want out of a series like this, which has been very, very different. You've had races up mountains, races through cities, and now it has come down to just a simple race. And I'm looking forward to it, and I want to become world champion, so it's pretty simple, really. $10 million question. Gomez happens to have a, a great run. He gets 20 meters uh, up on you guys with uh, 100 meters to go. You're side by side with uh, your old <laughs> housemate. How does that thing unfold? Because if you beat him, Gomez is world champion. If your brother beats you, he's world champion. But have you ever thought of that scenario yet coming into this weekend? I have thought about it, uh, but I've also kind of not once thought about think about it as well because obviously it is an interesting way to think about it because if I let Alistair beat me, then he'll be one world champion. But uh, then again, I want to have the best race that I can do. Because as an athlete, you train for, for days like this. So I think I'm not, not going to give it too much thought. I'm waiting to see what happens that final 100 meters. But I, I, I hope for my sake that there's not that 2% that I'm thinking, maybe I should let him win. I hope that doesn't happen. Big crowds expected this weekend. Uh, you're going to have to be looking out there and having a, a sense of those young guys I talked to in the junior and the under 23 who came away with medals, uh, the young lady silver medal, all of them inspired by what you guys have done. Do you understand your role in terms of inspiring that next generation? Uh, I do understand that role. I've understood it more this year. Your know, Last year changed things completely for me. We went from not really being known uh, outside the triathlon world to, to, to having a completely different life where we get recognised in the street and 
Uh, I get young kids coming up to me all the time and young kids are, uh, around Leeds who I've seen starting cycling just because they watch us on TV and it, it, it's a great role to have and um, I love sport and if I can teach people to love sport as well then it's great and to see Great Britain do well on Thursday was, was great, especially on this course. Like this weekend, I know there's a thousand age groupers out there racing today that are going to be cheering for you on Sunday. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a clap on your face. Seven, take one. So, uh, unique, I mean, it's got to be strange for you to come back to this park after the madness of, uh, of last year. Just starting out, just the emotions of coming back here, remembering what it was like last August. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic to come back on one hand. Um, you know, it was a real special day and I got some really, really special memories of it and um, a lot of nostalgia just coming back and it being so similar in lots of ways. Uh, and I, I think it's fantastic that London gets to have another big event. You know, I think it has become an iconic triathlon venue. Um, a great course, great for spectators in the middle of one of the world's best cities. You know, it's really, really special. And I think this year it's even more special that thousands of age groupers and, and other people, juniors and the 23s get to race on this course, on the Olympic course. And, um, there's so few Olympic events that that can happen with where you can actually get to do the Olympic course at, and race at the venue. I think that is just brilliant. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah, it would have been nice to draw a line under it after last year as well in the build up to the Olympics. You, you never focus on what happens that day after the Olympics and to be back here seems a little bit strange. San Diego, a unique opportunity for you this year. I mean, incredible performance in front of an American audience that really got to see you pull up close. Then the big track meet, uh, you know, six days later. Talk about that week in the U.S. I know you're there a week early doing some training, but how the race has unfolded for you, just the feeling of being at that level of fitness so early. Yeah, I really enjoyed the trip to the U.S. actually. Um, I didn't really expect to be in, in great form that early. I, I wanted to go and race San Diego for the series, and I wanted to race in Stanford the weekend after. Um, and so I went not really knowing what to expect, but I had a good uh, 10 days of training leading up to that event. Uh, raced really well in San Diego and enjoyed the whole event being, being in the US racing racing there uh, and just being there and then yeah really enjoyed going to race the 10k the week afterwards as well. Any, any pressure in that 10,000 uh, because of this Olympic triathlon guy mm. thinks he's a runner you know was there any pressure or you just thoroughly enjoyed it I mean it was a great run second place uh, very close I think to the Mexican at the finish. Yeah I mean I didn't feel too much pressure I had lots of uh, I had some of my friends kind of teasing me a bit, saying, you know, the whole triathlon world is resting on your shoulders. <laughs> if you run 30 minutes here, everyone's going to say triathlon courses are short and triathletes can't run. And so I was like, oh, no. But I took it all in good spirits and laughed it off a bit. And uh, now I just saw it as a, a brilliant opportunity, really, to go and do something different. And I was really excited about doing it and um, really enjoyed the whole experience and, and doing something so different get to this uh, iconic new opportunity in Kitzbühel, we've been uh, more critical than anyone else on the circuit of, hey, I don't want to just cookie cutter, let's make it different. We get to Kitzbühel, finally we have that course, a little bit of uh, food poison or sickness for you the night before, yet you still showed up on the day and had a brilliant performance. Just your memories of that course. Yeah, Kitzbühel was tough, obviously, a tough lead up into it, but uh, it would have taken an, an earthquake for me to miss that race, I think. You know, I really wanted to race. Um, and I, I still really wasn't right on the day on the day of the race even and, and probably had one of the worst swims I've ever had in WTS racing I think um, but it was just a fantastic race I, th I think that's what Kitzbühel is all about and should be all about it's fantastic going to the Alps fantastic going to that town and fantastic to be able to use the mountains to and showcase the whole area and I think it worked out brilliantly for everyone you know it's brilliant for me to be able to race on that course but I think it looked great on TV. You know, people were saying afterwards, I watched that race. It was that was brilliant to watch, just absolutely brutal, and was so exciting. So, yeah, I think that was a really, really good race to do. You get to the biggest crowd of the year in Hamburg. I was just looking a couple of days ago, slow motion. You're looking over your shoulder, you and your brother side by side coming down. What's going on through your mind? Because you told me that he's in great shape and it's going to be a factor. And uh, that incredible sprint finish with Johnny meeting you for one of the first times on the circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Again, Hamburg was always going to be tough for me and uh, to be honest, I was running along thinking I'm just happy to be here, I'm happy to be here uh, and then Javier dropped off. I think this is brilliant. I'm going to come second and then I thought, you know, Johnny's not running that fast here. I'm going to have to try and sprint him and um, 
I actually started sprinting and thought, you know, this is good. Looked over my shoulder and he's right there just sprinting past me. Uh, and I was still just sprinting as fast as I could. And was, I thought, you know, maybe he just gives up, so I'm going to push right to the end, push right to the end. And it, it just wasn't quite enough. He was that bit faster than me. But yeah, it was a great race. That again was an exciting race from start to finish. Um, uh, a magician who seems to look at the competition, figure them out. And maybe the race in Stockholm for me might be one of the three or four most impressive I've ever seen you do in your career because you hadn't put in all of the run mileage. You know, you knew in your heart you maybe weren't 100%, and yet you found a way to win by breaking away on the bike. That, that was a unique situation. Uh, I mean, had you had that plan or you just opportunity arose on lap eight, and here I go. Of course, you know, you have maybe ideas before the race and there's different ways you can win a race, but you've got to absolutely assess the situation as you go along and, and see what's going on. And I kind of realised that we've been pushing quite hard on the bike and some the other guys getting a bit tired. I thought maybe I've got a chance here to, to get away and if I can get those 20 seconds and, you know, maybe I can hold on or maybe I'm only going to get caught at 7 or 8k, at which case, you know, they've worked hard to catch me and, and that might be my best chance. Um, so I took it and then I actually started running and thought, oh no, <laughs> this, this was a shocker. and felt terrible for those first few K, but then got into my running a bit and yeah, it was actually good. And, and I was really proud of that race. I think, um, yeah, it's really good. I think what really shows of, of being a good athlete is having those good days when you're not having a good day, you know, getting a result when things aren't necessarily going to plan. So that was fantastic. But I think at the end of it, I probably would have been all right just running. <laughs> I think I was actually fit enough. <laughs> all three of you guys legitimately can win this weekend, the World Championship title. I asked Javier the question, I mean, in some ways, each of you have brought the best out of each other. I mean, certainly Gomez was all by himself for a couple of years. Both you and your brother have forced him to be a bit better athlete. Maybe he's forced you guys to be better athletes as well. Uh, your excitement about knowing that anyone can get it done, but they've got to execute on Sunday. Yeah, I think it's fantastic, uh, the situation we're in now where anyone can win. and. I think really that's what the World Series is all about, uh, excitement right up to the last race where anyone can win it. Um, and it's, it, it was a lot better, say, in 2009 when I was winning by miles and could have called to come forward to come fifth or sixth, but that's not how it is. And I, and I think this way is a lot better for spectators, so that's a good thing. But I think on the, the rivalry of all three of us, I think, um, yeah, it's been fantastic. I, I think it's uh, been really exciting to watch and it's been even more exciting to be in um, as all pushing each other on. And, I think really getting the best out of each other. Last question, uh, I asked your brother this, but you know, walking around with a thousand British age groupers, uh, many of them are in their first, second, third race of their life because you guys inspired them so much a year ago. Do you, do you have the sense that sort of impact you're having, not just on kids, but 40 year olds and 50 year olds as well? Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and in Britain, we talk so much about legacy. You know, do, has the Olympic had a legacy? Has it had an effect? And um, it's so difficult to measure and, and there's a report in the newspapers almost every week saying you know this hasn't happened there's not more participation but I meet people almost every day that said you know I watched the Olympics I watched you I watched Johnny and uh, that made me decide to enter a triathlon or uh, I've decided to cycle to work or enter a 10k or it doesn't matter you know it's, they've decided to get out there get active and do sport and I think that's fantastic and that's what legacy is all about. Like this weekend looking forward to a great race on Sunday. Thanks very much. Awesome.